I've got a question for you. Have you ever felt like you're yelling at the top of your lungs, trying to get your point across to someone, but you don't feel like anybody's listening? Check out this example. Hey guys, can somebody please come take out the trash? Sure, in a minute, Mom! Oh man, I lost again! Oh. Hello! <laughs> Guys, this is really heavy! Yeah, you got this, Mom! <laughs> go, Mom! Go, Mom! Whoa! I got a high score! <sighs> hey, guys! Anyone want pizza? Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes! So our kids might not always be listening, but as a parent, are we really doing a better job? Come check it out today as we talk about how to listen to God in a world that's crying out for our attention. A couple years ago, we got our Golden Doodle Perry, and ah, I can't believe it is actually turning five, five guys this year. It's crazy, but I remember when we first got him, and we had this new puppy, and he was peeing all over the house, and pooping all over the house, and jumping all over the furniture. I was like, I was about to lose my mind. I'm like, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? A great friend who's a dog trainer came to me and came over to the house one day and said, oh girl, you have got to set some ground rules here. She's like, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get him just one-on-one. -on -one. Don't even include the boys at first, but I want you to take him in the backyard and I want you to teach him three basic commands. One, sit. Another one, stay. And the third one, shake. And I was like, how am I gonna do that? So she spent the afternoon just one-on-one -on -one and she said, he hears your voice. But Bethany, in that quiet environment, he is gonna recognize your voice. He is gonna understand your voice and he's gonna listen to it no matter what happens. So you'll be able to take him to other places and he'll be able to hear your voice and recognize your voice above all the chaos, above all everything else that you're gonna have to go through. And so as I'm walking my dog this last week, God brought all those memories to mind because I had all this quality time just alone with Perry in the backyard doing all this training because I was the only one allowed to do that for the longest time. And he learned the command, sit, where he had to sit in place and not move. Then he learned stay, where I would walk away and even turn my back to him, and he had to stay in that spot. And then the last one, which we just thought was funny, was shake. And he got that was like first. He loved shaking, and he still loves shaking. Even when he meets new people, he has to shake their hand. That's like his way of greeting. But the thing I've noticed now, especially now that he's gotten older and we've taken him into so many different environments, no matter what environment he is in, all I have to say is, Perry, sit. Perry, stay. Those two commands, he will respond to immediately. And it's just by the tone of my voice and the motion. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if chaos is broken around, around, around us. He will do those two commands. And you know what? God is the same with us because if we don't, we don't spend time with him in quiet, we're not going to recognize his voice when things get loud, when things get uncontrollable, when we're listening to the own voice in our own heads. His voice sounds different because we know that because we spent time with him, one-on-one -on -one time with him in training and these devotional times that we have along with him. I hope this encourages you at this parallel. And of course, y'all, I don't know if you guys know this, but God loves us a lot more than our dogs. I'm, I'm just saying. And I love my dog a whole lot. So if that's encouragement to you. <laughs> but how do we really get alone with God when things are going crazy? And it's probably the last thing we want to do is stop. Well, I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to get to in our Bible story today. So the verse that God brought me to, and really the Bible passage actually that God brought me to was in 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 13. And you can go and read it. I really want you to take your Bible out and read it. But it's basically right after Elijah 
tells all the prophets of Baal and does this huge miracle on top of the mountain top. If you remember that story where all of these prophets of Baal were there and he's like, oh no, no, we are going to show who the real God is. And he had this big showdown. I mean, if you mentioned the whole Western theme, like I've always like, hey, you make your move. And then Elijah's like, yeah, I know my God's going to show up. I know my God's going to show up. So you all do whatever you're going to do. And they did. The whole entire day they tried to get Baal to show up. And of course he never did. And so Elijah has showed all those people. And if you haven't read that story, start on that. Start on a chat. And the Bible's interesting, y'all. The Bible is so amazing and filled with stories. How people don't know that, I just, I just blows my mind. My kids love that story. It's like their favorite story. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. And where this story takes off is Elijah's just done this, but Jezebel, Queen Jezebel's like, oh, no, you didn't. Just take all, all my prophets to Baal. I am going to go and take your life. And so what do you do when somebody's scared like that? And keep that in mind, something huge just happened. What happens after something huge happens in our life? That God moves mountains. Usually, and I've seen this happen in so many other people's lives too, we go into a desert time. Not always, but a lot of times I find myself coming off the heels of something amazing where God has moved mountains for me. And I go into a desert time and I go, God, what happened? Like just yesterday you did this huge thing in my life, but today, I am just stuck, and that's usually when the enemy tries its hardest, doesn't he? Something comes in our life, and we've seen God move, we've seen God do amazing things, but all of a sudden it gets personal in our life, and we go, oh my goodness, God, I need help because I'm getting attacked in that one spot where I struggle the most. Elijah was scared. He was scared of his life. He was scared that he was going to die by Jezebel. He was scared that all of his efforts that he was doing wasn't going to amount to anything. So in 1 Kings chapter 19, the Lord actually gets to speak to Elisha while he's running in the middle of the desert, while he's gotten some food from this amazing angel that shows up twice, by the way, because he says, hey, you're hungry, he didn't say this. But he looks at Elijah and he meets his needs first. He meets his physical needs before he touches his emotional, before he touches his mental, before he touches all this other stuff that's going on. He knows, say, hey, Elijah, you're hungry. You've done a lot. You've probably been focused so much on other people that you haven't remembered yourself. How cool is that, that our God, that our amazing Abba Father sees our physical needs before we notice it ourselves. That also talks about a lot of self-care, but a lot of times, especially those of us in ministry, we're so focused on what God has called us to do. We're so focused on the needs of other people. We're so focused on going and going and going that a lot of times we forget to stop and rest and go, whoa, I'm hungry. Whoa, I'm emotionally drained. Whoa, my mental capacity right now is just stinking. I need to take a break. I need to stop. So that's what he does. And he literally bakes cakes and puts it right in front of Elijah. And the angel says, Elijah, awake and eat. Because Elijah's literally famished to the point where he's just like collapsed on the rock. How many of us have been like that? I know I'm not the only one. So many of us have gotten to that point where we go and go and go that we literally get to our breaking point and that's when God can almost speak the loudest. That's when God can really touch us in a place where it matters the most. Nine. And it says, Then he came to the cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord and the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken you and their covenant. They have thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So if you read some of this, there's not, I mean, if you look back in it, he's not the only one that survived. If you look back at that story in the previous chapter, Elijah was one of the, he is the main prophet there, but guys, there's other people there. So Elijah has completely just not mentally seen everything correctly. The way he is, he is feeling downcast. He is feeling discouraged. He is feeling fear, but he's also not seeing right. And if you didn't check that out, we talked about that in the previous video, how sometimes when we're really facing hard obstacles that we don't see correctly, that we need somebody else to come alongside and help us see better. That's what's going on, but at least he's here. He's here at the cave. He's willing to come to God and go, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm saying. And God has already provided a way to get there. He's already provided the food. He's provided the journey. So Elijah's showing up. He's telling him what's going on. And this is the coolest part. And we've heard the story before, but I want you to think about it in this context. In verse 11, and this is what happened. And this is the famous part. And he said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by in a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind 
after the wind was an earthquake, but the Lord was in the earthquake. And after the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of what? A low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why did God do all that? Why did God make all these huge things happen? The huge wind that came and got Elijah's attention so much so that guys, it broke the rocks. It literally shattered the rocks. I don't know about you, but I have not seen rocks shatter for a wind. This was a holy wind. This was a godly wind. This was one that just takes your breath away. But God was not in that. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake, but he was in this gentle whisper. And so much so that when Elijah heard it, he what? He moved. He went to the entrance of the cave. He wanted to be closer to that voice. Although he was fearing, he knew that voice. He knew that voice so close because he had heard that voice before. And he's going, okay, God, I get you. I hear you. You were the same God yesterday and that mount that I was there in the middle of all the prophets of Baal that you showed up. You are the same God today that you were yesterday. You were here and you see me for who I am. I'm okay to break down right now. I'm okay to say that I'm scared. I'm okay to come to you with my problems. I'm okay to be at the end of my rope and just come to you. It's okay to be here at that place. How important is that to get to that point? We can come to God with everything and just lay at the feet at the beginning of the mountain there and just go, God, I need you. I just simply need you and to hear his voice, because I wonder if he heard his voice correctly the first time, because he says it twice. Isn't that funny how God says it twice? He said it twice. What are you doing here, Elijah? And it's not like he dismissed the first answer, but I wonder if he saw something in Elijah's heart that said, wait, 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 wait. I need to remind you who I am. I need to remind you that I am the same God. I need to remind you that I am the God that's capable of tearing rocks apart. I am the same God that's capable of burning this whole entire mountain up in fire. But that same God, that same power, that same amazingness, that same allness, that same God, Elijah, is so personal. And I want this time with you. I want this quietness time with you. And it's okay for you to come just the way you are. And I need this time with you, Elijah. How cool is that? And I love that picture. I love that imagery that came because if you go, and I'm not going to go into it now, but a really cool verse to check out that talks about in the Moses, actually the first time he went up into the mountain to meet God in Mount Sinai and the clouds that covered and the lightning that struck and how God spoke in the thunder. This is the same God. Guys, here's the cool part. He's the same God today. He puts that Holy Spirit inside of us. We have that power. We have that direct connection and that same amazing, powerful, mighty God can be here and today, can be here in our now, can be here in every single thing we do every single day that we are never alone, but we have to spend that intimate, quiet time one-on-one and that mighty, amazing God wants that. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know, it does that we not only do we have access to that power, but he wants to be alone with us just as we are. And so many times we take that for granted because we're so rushing off to the next thing and God's called me to the next thing and I have to go to this next thing and we don't stop. So if I can encourage you today with anything is that some of the best training that he has isn't going to the next thing. And trust me, if you know me well, you know I love to go (laughs) and experience. You know that. But I will tell you the truth, coming out of a season that I've just come out of, being still, learning, truly learning what it means to be still and bring yourself, all of yourself, identifying what you're feeling, understanding why you're feeling it, coming to God, and just being at his feet and just not necessarily even having to hear his voice, but just knowing that that mighty God can be with you where you are. Just resting in that. Guys, I'm telling you, that is what will get you through the voices out there. If you don't have the quietness part, you're not gonna be able to do ministry. You're not gonna be able to go through the loudness of this world. You're not gonna be able to do anything with apart from God. You can't do it. So. That is what God's been teaching me. Just like I spent time quietly with my dog (laughs) and just how we have that relationship, even in public, 
we continue with that relationship in public with God because we know what his voice sounds like. So it can be loud. The winds can be roaring around us. The fire can be going. The earthquake can be going. But in the middle of all of it, we can hear. We can still hear the gentle whisper. I got you. I got you. I see you right now. You will never go too far away from me. I got you. And that's just encouraging to me. I know our lives can be crazy, but our time with our God, our time, our intimate, quiet time with our God doesn't have to be. I'm praying that you will take time this week, no matter what it likes like, and y'all, I am a mom of all boys. Mm, I get it, life can be crazy, but I'm praying that you can just begin to just slow down. And sometimes I will be still, be able to slow down. It's just a way of just taking a breath, just go. And knowing the very air that we're breathing is not our own knowing that God's put us there. And each time I take a breath, I'm reminded like, wow, I have a purpose. <laughs> I am breathing. I am here. That God is, God's air is in my lungs, that he has given me breath for this very moment. You Again, you know what to do. Take some time this week. Be still. Connect with God. And remember, dare to do more than just survive. Step out and thrive. And be nice to your kids. They love you. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.